I've got lots of tips for you, lots of ways to make money out of property or any other means. There are lots of creative finance ways of buying property. I've just touched on a few today. So do follow me and best of luck in your property journey. Hello, my friends. This is Tony Talks Money. I'm here to teach you ways to achieve financial independence. Right, today I'm going to talk about a number of ways in which you can buy property for free. I know it sounds too good to be true, but believe it or not, this is possible. Now, I did cover this off in my Substack on 31st of March this year in a blog I wrote called How to Buy Property for Free. So you can find more details on there. Just subscribe. So some of the things I mentioned I'm going to cover now in this video. One option is called, uh, ironically, called lease option. That's what we call it in the property world. But basically what it means is you rent a property under what's called an assured short old tenancy. A lot of people do do that when they're renting. But what you do, you have a separate legal agreement, which is an option to buy. So the idea is that you, you, you agree the fixed price to buy the property at any time during the a short, short old tenancy, which could be for 12 months, could be for six months, probably longer term, could be five years. And because the price is fixed today, it can be quite economic way of, of buying a property, uh, a fixed price today. You could even build into the agreement that the rents can be treated as uh, you know partial repayments of, of the loan. You could even take over the, the mortgage itself as part of the deal. You could pay the mortgage on behalf of the owner and the repayments you make take get taken into account when you come to buy the property eventually. So it can be quite a good way of buying property, particularly if you are struggling to get a mortgage yourself. So this could be a way of getting around it. So that's one option. Another one is adding value, where you basically do a concept known as BRRR. So it's basically buy, renovate, rent and remortgage the property. So when you add value, for ex a great thing to do, for example, is to add extra bedrooms. You might get a house that on the simplest level, you might get a house that's got, say, one or two spare reception rooms. Say, for example, it might have a big kitchen and a dining room. Well, if the kitchen's big enough, you might be able to turn that into a kitchen diner and then use the dining room to create an extra bedroom. Hey, presto, suddenly the value's gone up because houses typically are worth more when they've got more bedrooms. So if you can buy a house with three beds and convert it to five, you might need to do an extension or a garage conversion, loft conversion, whatever it may be. But by spending some money on the property, particularly if it's one that's a bit, how can I put it, a bit run down. Many of these properties just need a bit of TLC. They just need a little bit of uh, cosmetic work done, for example. They might, it might need to be painted and decorated. It might need uh, a new bathroom, a new kitchen. They don't need to be very expensive to, to, to do all this work. You might spend seven, eight, ten thousand pounds on a property. And if you add an extra bedroom or two, you could create a lot of value. The value goes up and then you remortgage the property. Let it out. The rent covers the mortgage and you may be able to get enough capital from the mortgage to release capital to pay back to yourself, pay back the deposit. It is possible. I come across cases where people have bought property and after doing up the property so well and adding extra bedrooms, they're taking enough money out of the increase in the property value, enough out of the, the, the mortgage that they've been able to buy the house effectively for free. So there are many of these techniques. There's at least 10 that I can think of. I haven't got time to go through that in one short video. That's two ideas there already. Another popular one is exchange with delayed completion. So basically what you do is you do exchange contracts to buy a property. Normally you can't occupy the property after exchange, but if you agree the purchase price today, you pay your deposit, which has to be 10% minimum legally, but you have a separate legal agreement whereby the seller allows you to live in that property or to let it out before completion. Now completion can be delayed for years. You know, you could delay it for five years if you wanted to, if it was agreed by the seller who just wants to move on and maybe 10% is all they need for now, 10% deposit. They may not even need the money now. They may just want to move on and buy another property. So you could even babysit their mortgage for them. So they haven't got, they're, they're freed of the constraint of paying the mortgage payments. They're just free to move on. And some people just want to get away from a property for whatever reason. So that can be quite a clever way of doing it. What else can you do? There, there's, there's so many ways. One way could be to borrow money privately to finance a property purchase. You can take out a mortgage, but no lender will lend you 100%. So if it's buying a property in your own name, you're going to have to find 
at least a 10% deposit. If it's an investment property, you're going to have to find at least 25% deposit. Well, the first place to start would be to ask your, your relatives to lend you the money, and they're the ones most likely to lend you money privately. And they may or may not require a charge on the house. If they're your relatives, they probably trust you anyway. It could be a way of avoiding finding the deposit. You have to declare it all, obviously, to the lender when you're borrowing, but that can be a way of effectively buying the property for free. For free in the sense that you haven't got to find the cash to put down as the, the deposit. And of course, the other way, the obvious way is you might have relatives, particularly parents, who just gift you the money. The old bank of mum and dad. Apparently, if parents were counted as mortgage lenders, they'd be in the top 10 of mortgage lenders in the UK, bank of mum and dad. So there's just a few ideas. There are many. As I say, f f follow me on my Substack account. I just look it up on, on Google. I've got lots of tips for you, lots of ways to make money out of property or any other means. There are lots of creative finance ways of buying property. I've just touched on a few today. So do follow me and best of luck in your property journey. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. Follow the links below and don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends.